Good morning. I'm glad that you joined us this morning as we um, celebrate together our Lord and Savior. And the fact that we are his children, it's a great day to celebrate. Starting next Sunday, we're planning on being back in the churches for worship. Several things to say about that. Um, the first one being, please do what feels right for you. I said last week, no judgment on whether you come, whether you don't. Um, it is your, it is your um, choice to do what feels best for you in your circumstance, and no judgment will be placed, either if you attend or if you don't. However, I do want to say, too, that there will be certain guidelines that we will follow when we return, and I will be doing a video and sending that out on Remind so that you have that information um, readily available and can check that um, as we get closer to next Sunday. And um, one of the things will be a mask, so please um, go out and get your mask if you don't have one already. It's been fun and um, interesting and uh, had a learning experience to do services this way. Um, I think that's all of the announcements for this morning. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh God, we thank you for being with each and every one of us in our own location as we worship you, as we raise our voices to praise you. Father, allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. May the Holy Spirit move us and shake us and get us excited about you and about your word and about your music and about praising and worshiping you. Father, may this bring delight to your ears and joy to you. Amen. Join us now. Lift your voices wherever you are and sing these words and sing these songs to praise the Lord. Well, before we start worship this morning, let me read from you from the book of Psalm, chapter 113, verses 1 through 4. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forever, from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations. His glory is above the heavens. So wherever you may be this morning, let's lift our voices together and sing to the King. Sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation His empire shall bring. Joy to the nations when Jesus is King. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise, and sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. Sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation His empire shall bring. Joy to the nations when Jesus is King. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise, and sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. 
for his returning we watch and we pray we will be ready the dawn of that day we'll join in singing with all the redeemed satan is vanquished and jesus is king Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise, sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise, sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King, sing to the King. Sing to the King, sing to the King. Father, we just come before you this morning, and wherever we may be, Father, we lift our praises unto you. We just ask that you come and inhabit the praises of your people. And Father, regardless of the situations that we may face, that Father, you hear our prayers, you hear our praises. You are faithful and you are just. Your word says that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And Father, whatever, whatever we are facing, Lord, whatever storm we find in front of us, Father, you will make a way. All we have to do, Lord, is put our hand in your hand and follow you. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, He will make a way, He will make a way. God will make a way, where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. By a roadway in the wilderness, he'll lead me. And rivers in the desert will I see. Heaven and earth will fade, but his word will still remain. He will do something new today God will make a way where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me He will be my guide Hold me closely to His side 
with love and strength for each new day he will make a way he will make a way normally i um, would ask for your joys and concerns or i would have asked for them in this situation a couple of days ago However, I will uh, admit to you that Joe and I have been on vacation and I have not received joys and concerns before the taping of this. And I know you're thinking, vacation? What did you leave for vacation on? But we had, <laughs> I mean, what are we leaving? We've been on vacation, um, but not exactly. And plus we had this booked previously and it's a privately owned place and they were so excited that we didn't cancel and we just didn't want to back out on our commitment. So um, we did go to a cabin in the woods and we'll be home as you're soon after you watch this um, this morning. I do want to um, pray that we make good decisions as we begin to gather back next Sunday. And please know, too, that that could change this week. There is a possibility that something may have come up. But, um, at, you know, when you, as far as we know right now, we will be meeting next Sunday at Grace and Walnut Grove. But let's pray for good decisions to be made, for us to put the proper, um, the proper things in place that we need to do to keep everyone safe. And pray for those who are discerning whether or not they should come. Also pray for the community meal at Grace, um, deciding when they will pick that back up again. Being faithful to the Lord, but also faithful to the volunteers who help and to um, the people who come in. And so there's, there's a lot of discernment and a lot of um, listening to the Lord on those type of things. So... Um, those are the things I know that we need to pray for. Continue to pray for um, our officials that make the decisions and um, for the right decisions to be made. That's what I'll say about that. So at this time, we will um, go to the Lord in prayer. And I'm going to start with just a few seconds of silence. And I know that we've had silence in our lives more than we're used to, but let's take a deep breath and concentrate on the Lord before I open in prayer. Oh God, you are good and merciful, and you are the God of all things, the creator of the world. You are big and powerful, and yet, Lord, you think about and care about and love each one of us individually. Father, it blows me away that you can care so much for your children. Sometimes it seems like you should be so busy that you couldn't think about us or be concerned about me personally or each one of us, And but, Father, you are. We don't know how it happens. We don't know how you work specifically, but we know that you do. That's where our faith lies and your promise that you will be with us and that you care about each one of us. You know the number of hairs on our head. And Father, because you love us so much, you sent your son to earth to leave his heavenly dwelling, to come to earth, to experience what we experience and feel what we feel. And that goes along with, with joy as well as pain and suffering. And oh Lord, we know that he suffered. Thank you for your son. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did going to the cross to save us for life everlasting. And Father, we pray as we transition back into what we think will be normal someday, we know that there will be a lot of things that aren't normal. A lot of things that we'll do differently. And Father, sometimes that's hard. And sometimes, Lord, we, we tend to lash out at each other or we tend to um, be a little bit judgmental. That's not the way I would have done it. But God, help us to give each other the grace that you offer us. That we give each other grace to perhaps make mistakes or to do things not the way we the other person thinks we should. But Lord, just to be truly loving during this transition period. 
That goes for everywhere that we are, not just in church, but in every situation. Lord, help us to just be kind and gentle as we go back into the way we used to live. It's going to take time, Lord, and give us um, patience to draw upon. Father, we pray for those who are making huge decisions for tons of people. We pray for our city officials and for our um, Ohio governor and, and our doctors, and we pray for the president, and we pray for the leaders of this world. There's so many things to take into account, and God, they're not going to make everybody happy, but we pray, we pray that together we can work through this, and we can become a strong nation. We can become strong Christians, and that we can learn to trust you even more. Father, we ask for discernment for those who are making the decisions and that they bow their head and ask for your guidance before anything is decided. Father, we thank you for the church, the church that is the people. We thank you that you ask, you call us to be in communion with one another and that it brings you great joy to see your children together, worshiping and laughing and crying together. That our faith is, is made stronger and brighter when we're together. Thank you for making us a people who uh, care for one another, who have compassion for one another. And I pray for those who are lost, God. I pray for those who do not know you, who have turned away from you, who have never even given you a thought, or for those who followed you for years and then were disappointed and stopped. I pray, Lord, that they are drawn back to you, and I pray that they feel your presence in every situation they go through, and it's so powerful that they can't deny it's you. And help us to be bold in our witnessing of just what Jesus Christ did for us. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. I have this jar of putty and I really want to play with it, but it's impossible for me to open. That must be really frustrating for you. If, Sarah, if you can't open it, then let one of us try. If we can't open it, then let mom or dad try. If they can't open it, well, you'll probably find some creative way to open it. Many situations in life are like this stuffed container of putty. You can try how, however hard you want, but it never seems to work out how you want. It would be nice to have God come flying down to save the day. But God doesn't always work like that. Sometimes God's plan is in the waiting and struggling that we can and not see in the middle of it. Take the story of Joseph. Joseph was sold into slavery and thrown into prison. God could have broke him out of prison at any time. But if God would have done that, Joseph would not have been in the right place and at the right time to save Egypt and his family from famine. If God were in the business of saving us every time something went wrong, we would never learn anything ourselves. We would just sit back and wait for the quick rescue instead of learning to trust in Him. Next time you're in a tough situation, take a moment to, to think the way God teaches and prepares us. Ask Him to give us perseverance and prepare us to do His will. Get in there. Hello? Uh, well, we are going to have to go get Mom and Dad. Please pray with us. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for teaching us perseverance. Thank you for teaching us perseverance. And helping us learn to trust. And helping us learn to trust you. Help us to remember. Help us to remember. That no matter how hard the situation. That no matter how hard the situation. You always have a plan in the making. 
You always have a plan in the making. Amen. Amen. A million years later. Perseverance paid off. I'm reading the scripture, First Peter, second chapter, verse 16 and 17 out of the Good News Bible. Live as, live as free people. Do not, however, use your freedom to cover up any evil, but live as God's slaves. Respect everyone. Love other believers. Honor God and respect the emperor. Thank you, Father, for the word that we just heard, your word that Barb just read. We thank you, God, for giving us guidance and direction readily available to us in your book, in the Bible. We pray that um, through the power of the Holy Spirit this morning, that we resonate with the message that somehow, Lord, each one of us decides what you have chosen for us individually, that the message uh, rings in our ears, and then how it is you want us to live. Amen. So we will begin in-person worship next Sunday, May 24th. However, like I said, if it's not right for you, then please feel free to stay home. We we want to continue taping. We're not sure exactly how that looks. Um, right now, we don't have the capability of going live, and so, because we would need the internet. So um, we could, t we will probably tape it and then put it on to be viewed later. But, you know, we've kind of gotten out of the habit of going to church. And I don't always think that's a good thing. <laughs> when we get out of the habit of something that is good for us, that's not a good thing. I mean, inevitably, someone will say, you know what, I kind of liked watching him at home. I think I got just as much out of it. I, I was in the comfort of my living room, had my jammies on. It felt pretty good. I think I'll just keep doing that. But our coming together, our worship together, should never be replaced. There was a time when we were not able to do it, and it was rightly so that we should not have gathered. And there will come a time when everyone will be able to come together, and we should not give that up. In Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, it says, And let us consider how we might spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching, the day, the day of the Lord, the day of the second coming. We are closer. Every day is closer to the coming of the Lord. You know, there are some people that can't imagine not going to church. I mean, on Sunday morning, that was probably the biggest adjustment for them, not getting up on Sunday mornings and going to church. There are some who can't imagine going to church. It's not for them. I, I've never really gone. I don't like it, they may say. Or they may say, I went and I found that the church is full of hypocrites. And I'm not always sure exactly what they mean by that. I mean, I know what a hypocrite is. They tell you not to do something, and then they do it. And that probably is the case in church. We all know what we should do, but we're all sinners. And we come to church to remind us how we are to live. We come to church to encourage each other to live the way Jesus lived, and we don't always get it right all the time. And there may even be times that I'm at the pulpit and I say, the word says that we do this or we don't do that. And then I may be guilty of it myself. It's not for lack of trying. But I am so grateful for his grace. That's what church and what Jesus is all about is his grace. 
that when we fail, he still loves us. When we aren't certain if we've made the right decision, he's there to guide us through it. So that may be, you know, we may be hypocrites, or you may see town officials in church, and you think, well, they weren't kind when they made this decision, or, you know, but it's because it didn't agree with you, or wasn't what you would have done. But church isn't a, a place for perfect people. I wouldn't be here. It's a place to come to be together and, and work through our imperfections. It's a place where we love each other in the, midst, in the midst of our imperfections. It's a place we gather together to love and try very hard to love unconditionally like Jesus loves us. You may have been hurt by the church in the past. Perhaps you went for years and you were involved in every situation or in every, every ministry that was available at the church and you just went gung-ho and then somehow you were hurt. Can I tell you that I've been through that? That's happened to me and it still almost brings tears to my eyes. It's not an easy thing to get past. But please know that it wasn't God that hurt you was the people, us imperfect people. What I would recommend when you get hurt by the church is that you go to, as the Bible says, go to the person who has hurt you. If there's not a, um, if you can't reach some kind of understanding, then you go to the pastor and talk to him. And I'm going to go out on the limb. This part is um, not in the Bible. Um, but sometimes we just have to leave where we are and go to the next place. God wants us to enter into worship with joy and thanksgiving and then for it not to be a hurtful thing when we walk into the church. Now, in saying that, sometimes we have to realize that it could be us. If you've gone to five different churches and everyone has, has hurt you in some way, you know, we need to look at ourselves and say, how do I need to react? How can I help? How can God help me through this situation? There's many who say, I don't go to church because all they do is ask for money. Ask the congregations at Grace and Walnut Grove how many times I've preached on money. I don't know, maybe six years I've been here. I mention it all the time, don't get me wrong, I mention it all the time about being generous givers because that's what we're called to do. But actually the center of a sermon on money, I don't know if I've ever done that. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the people at Grace and Walnut Grove are generous givers. I don't need to. So if you go to the church that keeps asking for money, then maybe you need to wonder why that is. Are the people not giving? And if people are giving and the, and the pastor still wants more and more, then perhaps that's when you need to go to the pastor and talk, and talk to them. Don't let that keep you out of church. Churches have bills they need to pay. And here's another thing. There was a pastor, one of my favorite pastors ever that I, that I um, worshipped under, said that one Sunday he preached on giving, on tithing. And at the end, he said to the congregation, I'm sorry I had to do that. I know that's not your favorite sermon. And when he walked out of the sanctuary, God very, very strongly scolded him. And he said, that's in my word. Don't you ever apologize for preaching my word. So when we talk about giving and tithing, it's because we know it's something that as you do it great, um, joyfully for the Lord, there's many blessings that come with that. It's part of God's word. It's part of how he wants us to live. Also, what you might want to keep in mind is that Satan uses people to discourage us, to hurt us, to discourage us, to upset us, to make us mad. Satan will use that. If there's something inside of you that's kind of personal and you really don't want people meddling in it, Satan will use people to meddle. 
He will use them to get right in where you don't want them to be. From the pastor to the trustees to anyone in the church. Satan's not a respecter, respecter of persons. He will get where it hurts through other people. Again, we go to the people, we talk about it, and we work it through. We may or may not agree, but we can agree to love each other through the differences. Some people plan to go to church, but they fail to make it priority, and everything else comes first. They have good intentions, they're good people, they're loving people, and they want to go to church. But there's too many things that get in the way. Don't let that be you. Make it a priority and work everything else around that. Some people don't see how gathering as a church matters at all. I want you to know that God has a desire for you to be part of the living body of Christ. When he desires something for you, it's because he knows it's best for you. I know someone who went to church most of their life and stopped, I don't know, five, six years ago, maybe long, I guess it's been longer than that, several years ago, stopped going. And I said, I think you need church. I, I, I just wish that you would find a church. And this person said to me, oh, I pray every day. That's not the point. Church offers something different. Something out, something different than the outside world offers us. It's, to, it's a place to, to grow in Christ. It's a place to worship with people who feel the same way you do about Jesus. And God made us to be in community, a community of believers, to come together to praise him. It brings him to life because he knows it's the thing that is best for you. You know, there's a lot of people who have to work on Sundays. And I'm sorry that you do. I, I, I know sometimes it's completely out of your hands. Perhaps, though, if you went to your supervisor, went to your um person, your boss, and said, could I have at least one Sunday off a month? Perhaps they would be able to work with you. If not, there are places that have Saturday night services, and I would suggest that you try to find those. I'm sorry, I don't have a list of those right now, but um, I, I believe so strongly in meeting that there's got to be other ways than Sunday morning. People are the church. We say that often. People are the church. Well, if people are the church, then why can't I just meet them anywhere? You can. You can meet them anywhere. You don't come to the church building. You can meet anywhere. You meet in a coffee shop. You can meet in the local pub. You can meet wherever you want. Meet. That's the main thing. Meet somehow. And then on Sunday morning, come and meet with the big group of believers at your church. Ephesians 4.16 says, As the church, everyone is from him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. If every individual person has a purpose and we obey that purpose, the body grows. People come together as a church, and the, uh, that's when community outreaches begin. It's hard to do these things solo, at home, by yourself. But when you come together, community outreaches begin. Discipleship succeeds, and life lived together induces the advancement of the gospel. It just does. It's the way God designed it to go. The people of God grow as individuals because of active engagement in the community of believers. Christ, being the head of the church, gives Christians a solid foundation and a leader to follow and imitate daily. 
and it's not me, it's Jesus. In John 17, Christ prayed for future believers to be united as he was united with the Father. We gather so that we may be like Christ. We gather because we get to enjoy this relationship with God. And back to everyone using their own talents and gifts. Everyone has a purpose in the local church. Everyone has a purpose in the local church, even the pastor. But God intentionally balances the strength and weaknesses of a church. Everyone has something that the other does not have. I would love to be able to sing. Well, I can, but I mean to where people would want to hear me. That's well, not in the cards for me. I'm thankful that there are others who can sing. I would be, I would, I wish I had time to come in and clean the church as other people do so well. I wish I could keep track of all the money that comes and goes out of here and do it effectively. Not my thing. Everyone has a purpose in the, ch in the church. We're stronger together than we are apart. And that is just a plain fact. In any situation, stronger together than we are apart. Every person is a vital member of God's family. I'm lacking where you may be strong. Your strengths challenge me to grow and address my weaknesses and vice versa. We gather to celebrate God. Celebrations are always better in a group. No one wants to celebrate their birthday by themselves. We gather for him, not for ourselves. So when we say, I don't, you know, church just really isn't for me, it's for God. We gather to, for him, to praise him, to worship him, to honor him. And God uses our differences to propel the gospel around the world through our diversity. We're not supposed to be cookie-cutter people that come into church and become, start behaving like each other. I mean, as far as loving and giving and serving, yes. But there's going to be many different ways that we do that. We gather. We gather because of God. We gather because of who he is. We gather because in his divine love for us, he gives us so much more than we could ever give to him. When you understand how much God loves you, it should become your greatest desire to serve him and honor him in any way that you can. If you don't have a church family, we invite you here to Grace Walnut Grove. Grace at 9 a.m. on Pine Street. Walnut Grove at 10.30 on 66A, we invite you to become part of, our, part of our family. If you haven't been to your own church for a while, go back. Everybody's coming back together. And you all, sometimes I've, I've done this in my lifetime where I have stopped going for a while and I thought, oh, I'm embarrassed. I can't go back now. Oh my golly, put that aside. The church, the people are so glad to see people come in. They're just, they're glad you're there. And if you go into your church that you haven't been to for a while, and they treat you anyway, but with hospitality and warmth, you may want to look for a different environment. Search for a church that works for you. You know, gone are the days where we need to go to the church that's across the street or down the, down the street, around the corner. I mean, most of us have cars these days. We can commute. You and your talents are needed in the body of Christ. You know, you may walk into a church and go, boy, they have it all together. Everybody knows what they're doing and where they're going, and they don't need me. But if you look very closely, you'll see that there are many individuals doing more than their fair share. 
many people who would love to have a break from not doing so many things every week. Do you know um, in Luke 10, 2, he says it, but it's so true today. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Do you know that when you go into a church and you get yourself acclimated and you ask if you can help in that ministry, that you are answering the prayers of the people in that church? There are people saying, I need somebody to help me with this. You know, there's this one area I wish we could tackle, but we just don't have the right talent or skill for that. And you become the answer to that prayer. When we come to church as a community, we can go out into the world as a light. We feed off of each other and our lights get brighter and brighter. And we're a much bigger, bolder light together than apart. Judy Collins had a song years ago called Both Sides Now. And I don't even really know if I understand what the song is, <laughs> what it's about. But the, but the title of that song came to my mind as I was doing preparing this message because I have been on both sides now. I have been on the side where church was not a priority. I have been on the side when I was hurt and didn't want to go. I have been on the side of, you know, what's it doing for me? And now I'm on the side of where I'm like, I love God so much because of him loving me that I want nothing more than to give back to him. I want to please him. I want his desire for me to be fulfilled. Being in community with his people bring him great joy. And I think as Christians, that's what we want to do. Bring joy to the Lord. We've been taping now for nine weeks. This is the ninth week. And I just have a lot of people um, that I want to thank quickly. Um, those of you who read scripture, Larry, Steve, Deb, Teresa, Mike, Scott, Emily, Marilyn, Linda, Bill, Kyle, Lynn, Garrett, Wynette, Derek, Kelsey, Jonathan, Barb. Those who came forth and did the children's chat, the Deeringers, they set a, a, a high bar with that first children's chat, and everyone just followed along with it and did great jobs. The Reams, the Dickies, the Hollands, the Dyserts, the Burks. And the songs, the very first week, we used some, um, well, the very first week, oh my gosh, we watched that again this morning, and we've come a little ways since then. But the, um, I think it was the following week, um, Anna Lynn and Eric Adams asked if we needed any music. And um, one week we did, oh, I know why that looked so funny, because the first week we used videos for songs and videos for children's chat, and then we thought we couldn't. We thought, oh, no, copyright, we can't do that. So then Anna Lynn and Eric Adams stepped forth and provided music for us. And we were so thankful. And they have such gifts and talents and just so eager to serve. And so thank you for doing that. We did find out that um, we could use those things. It's only if we were making money or selling them that we weren't able to. So that's why we've come a long way from the beginning. Thank Emily for her beautiful voice and for every time I say, can you sing, that she would give it a shot. The Daringer family, we remember uh, Harper trying to um, stay quiet, sit still while she was singing, and boy, she wanted to worship the Lord, and it was, it was fun to watch. Thank you, Daringer family. I want to um, thank Joe for the sound as well. Um, or for the, the sound, the music, well, the sound. He, you know, when you marry um, somebody, you're kind of, you know, you make a commitment, you're in it no matter what. <laughs> but Joe goes above and beyond being in our marriage. My husband is um, 
just gives over and over again. He uses his voice to glorify the Lord, and then he does everything else behind the scenes to honor his wife and God. And so I'm very thankful for what he does, um, from using, from manning the camera to singing to reading scripture. I mean, whatever I ask him to do, he does it without question. And I'm just very, very blessed to have a partner to do ministry with, like Joe. So there was a Sunday when um, several people were on the screen singing. I think the song was Cornerstone. Joe was, um, were you, I think, were you singing on that? Did you sing? I don't think, he doesn't remember. Um, Scott's student teacher, and I don't know his name, but he sang, he, he played music, he played music. Um, and then Joe's brothers were on there, Joe, uh, Steve and Dave. They, uh, Dave played the bass and Steve played the, um, drum, played the drums. Um, a couple weeks ago, my daughter Kayla joined in. And then we were so thankful, Jenny decided to come back. Her, her um, tax season was over and she just, she puts in so many hours. And so when that was over, she said, okay, I'm ready. And we were so thankful. So the last couple of weeks we've had her playing. The Spencers, um, Rich and Doug, Rich provided the equipment for us. So we're gonna have to look at equipment if we wanna continue doing this someday. And um, Doug Spencer, because every time Joe had a question with the camera, he called Doug and he would give him some kind of answer. Most of the time, that was the right one. And a special thanks, special, special thanks to Scott. Um, I'm proud of who he is. Um, as a son-in-law, I, I adore him because he is good to our daughter and wonderful dad. But as a person in the congregation, he has made this extremely easy on us. I mean, he has come up with ideas that have been amazing. I love the entertainment he has provided with he and his kids, keeping it light. But yet he's also the one that put all the songs together and had to, to orchestrate all of that. Um, every week he would upload this. Sometimes it went smoothly, sometimes it didn't. But Scott was available each and every time we had a question or a problem. And I remember in these whole, this entire nine weeks, there was one little error. In nine weeks. Heck, I do that, you know, every sermon I give. So anyways, thank you, Scott. We appreciate you. And I hope that you know that your hard work has not been um, unnoticed. And so I look forward to seeing you in person next week, those of you who feel that you can come. And if you don't, there will be a time when we will meet again soon. If we will not be back on um, videoing at 9 a.m. next Sunday, but there will be a time later on in the day that you can see it. So be safe and um, continue to praise the Lord. Look what he's gotten us through. Look where we are. We've almost made it. And he got us through all of that. So we are ever so grateful. Amen.